and welcome to our celebration of the El Camino Real High School Class of 2020. I'm Carrie Aiello and I am honored to serve as principal. One interesting aspect of delivering a commencement address on camera is I'm not exactly sure when you might be watching. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, parents, teachers, colleagues, district leadership, extended family members, pets, and friends. And given that most of you are at an age when sleeping in is the norm, good evening to the class of 2020. We are proud to recognize you on this important milestone. At this time, I'm honored to recognize the distinguished members of the Placentia Yorba Linda Unified School District Board of Education. Mr. Eric Paget, President, Mrs. Judy Carmona, Vice President, Mrs. Karen Freeman, Clerk, Mrs. Carol Downey, trustee, and Mrs. Carrie Buck, trustee. Thank you to our Board of Education for valuing alternative learning environments and supporting the growth of all students. Also essential to our celebration are our leaders at the district office. Thank you for looking after us, for the moments that you stopped by just to be around students, and for reminding us of the importance of our work. From our executive cabinet, Dr. Greg Plutko, Superintendent, Dr. Candy Plahey, Deputy Superintendent of Educational Services, Mr. Rick Lopez, Assistant Superintendent, Human Resources, Mr. David Giordano, Assistant Superintendent, Business Services, and Mr. Richard McAlinden, Executive Director, Instructional Support. From Cabinet, Dr. Linda Adamson, Director, Educational Services, Mrs. Nancy Blade, Director, Human Resources, Mr. Kerry Johnson, Director, Educational Services, and finally, my boss, my mentor, my friend, Mrs. Carrie Bisgard, Director, Instructional Support. To all of these leaders, thank you for entrusting us with the care of these exceptional students, for giving us permission to build community partnerships, and for consistently putting students first. The El Camino Real staff cares deeply about student success, makes an effort to meet students where they are, and has embraced our motto, start fresh. They hold students accountable, soften their approach on tough days, and believe all students can learn. Thank you to our dedicated teachers, Ms. Bonner, Mr. Cervantes, Mrs. Diavadis, Mrs. DiCarlo, Mrs. Gersbacher, Ms. Hawley, Ms. McLaughlin, Mr. Peterson, Mrs. Peach, Mrs. Rotkowski, Mr. Sweet, and Mr. Voga. Thank you all for your patience and flexibility. Also, thank you to our support staff who take the time to listen, to build relationships, and to care. Amanda, Amy, Danielle, Denise, Eric, Francis, Louis, Mario, Rochelle, Sarah, Vanessa, and our health clerk, Zan. On behalf of the class of 2020, thank you all for making a difference. At this time, it's my honor to recognize graduates for their commitment to service, growth, and scholarship. Members of the armed forces have a long-standing tradition of carrying challenge coins that symbolize unit identity and camaraderie. The coins bear unique symbols or mottos identifying the group they represent. The coins are often traded, presented, and collected among unit members. Challenge coins capture the very essence of military affiliation and instill pride in those who carry them as badges of honor. Two members of the class of 2020 have committed to serving our nation as members of the United States Marine Corps, Christopher Norbaum, and Carlos Gomez Perez. These brave Raptors were presented with red, white, and blue honor cords, as well as a special challenge coin. On one side is the official seal of the United States Department of Defense, and on the other is the PYL USD emblem. Carlos and Chris, please cherish these coins as a token of gratitude for your service to our country and as a marker to bring you home to us safely. Thank you to these young men, and thank you to all who have served 
to protect our freedom. Students who complete five or more credits with marks of A or B in a given subject while maintaining positive citizenship are recognized as department scholars. They are presented with special pins of distinction. Specific names are noted in the graduation program. The class of 2020 did not disappoint. Scholars, now would be a great time to grab your program and strut your stuff for your family. You didn't just do the work, you did it well. In digital design, we honor six scholars. One student earned special distinction as a California Career Technical Education Pathway Completer by dedicating over 300 hours to digital design. Congratulations, Richard Rojas Bermejo. In English Language Arts, we honor 17 scholars and in leadership, 13. Three student leaders served on the Superintendent's High School Advisory Council and were presented with honor cords. Thank you to Mary Jane Guevara, Felix Resendez, and Valeria Zuniga for representing our school. In math, we celebrate 11 scholars, in physical education, 10, in project-based learning, 10, in science, 6, and finally, in the social sciences, 22 scholars. In PYLUSD, we take pride in giving interested seniors the opportunity to address their class at graduation. The two students selected this year are the embodiment of grit and perseverance. The first is Mason Sadler, who is graduating one full year early. Mason is an inspiration to his peers and a man who holds true to his convictions. He's a young, old school hippie of sorts, an aspiring entrepreneur and jewelry designer. Mason will study business and gemology. He has risen above as a leader committed to ongoing personal growth. He is thoughtful and grateful and interesting. The second student speaker is Alyssa Boone. Alyssa graduated early as well in November, has solid academic skills and intellectual curiosity, and is the proud mom of an adorable, squeezable four-month-old son. She currently lives in Colorado with her boyfriend, their baby, and his family, where they've joined his father in the family's construction business. Alyssa will attend college in the Denver area this fall. She is grateful for a safe, supportive environment for her son, who loves peekaboo sessions and giggling with mommy. Thank you, Mason and Alyssa, for modeling the grit so many claim your generation is lacking. You inspire and motivate us all. Additionally, two El Camino students are honored each year by the Principal and Board of Education as PYLUSD Outstanding Seniors. This year, we are proud to recognize the growth and commitment to excellence of Carlos Gomez Perez and Genevieve Ogilvie, both of whom received medallions signifying their accomplishments. Carlos has already left for training with the United States Marine Corps, and Jenny will attend Fullerton College in the fall to explore her passion for media and entertainment. Thank you all for listening and watching thus far. These are young people who have faced extraordinary odds, and they deserve every moment of praise. Okay, on to my advice, and I promise, on to my concluding remarks. Class of 2020, when Amanda and I welcomed many of you back to El Camino, or welcomed you to our school for the first time, it seemed you were convinced life couldn't improve, especially life at school. Some of you seemed shocked that we were still positive and supportive. It was as though you felt totally deflated and undeserving of encouragement. Like the air had been sucked out of you, a teenager, who should be so full of life and energy. You shared how you were struggling, how you felt like a disappointment, how you weren't sure you could trust anyone or trust the idea that life could or would turn around in your favor. And honestly, more of you than we can count used the F word, and our hearts felt heavy each time we heard it. No, 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 not that F word, sillies. This is a graduation celebration after all. You expressed to us that you believed you had failed. That F word. The truth is none of us saw you as failing at life or failing at school. We saw you as flailing. Yep, 
That's a word. When you add an L to failing, you get flailing. You may have heard it used like this. His arms were flailing in the air as he rode the roller coaster at Knott's Berry Farm, or the economy is flailing due to COVID-19 closures. To flail implies a lack of direction, an aimless movement. Failing is something altogether different. To fail is to fall short, to be unsuccessful, to disappoint. How could any of us view you that way when we had just met? You see, with time and experience, we recognized what you did not. You were flailing, not failing. You were searching for a new direction and needed some extra air, horsepower, and energy to make a shift. You needed to start fresh. You were like my friend Toby. He's actually here in the studio with me today, so let me introduce you. Oddly enough, he sports our school colors, blue and black, a raptor through and through. Surely you've seen Toby's cousins at a car dealership on the side of the freeway or in some random shopping center. Yep, Toby is one of those wacky waving tube guys. What you're likely thinking right now is, this is her friend? Has she officially lost it during quarantine? Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. But what I do know is these wacky waving tube guys always make me smile. I mean, just when you think they'll lose all momentum, they bounce back and they surprise you and you smile. Does that sound familiar? It should, because it's the story of each of you. You are people who bounce back. You are people who surprise others with your wit and strength and curiosity and talent. You invariably make me smile. You're like my buddy Toby here. The only difference is you've not yet published a guide to success, and he has. In his book, Flailing at Life, Lessons from the Wacky Waving Inflatable Tube Guy, Toby offers advice. I mean, how can you not take advice from someone who makes you smile? I love the way Toby and his cousins bob and weave and then they chill, and then they bounce back. That's all of you. You're not failers, you're flailers. And you know what? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. We are all flailing, even those of us who look like we have it all figured out. It's part of the human experience. I'd like to conclude by sharing some of the key life lessons the homie Toby offers in his book. Number one, be your own biggest fan. When American rapper Snoop Dogg received his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, he acknowledged everyone who supported him in becoming a more positive, productive man. His speech made headlines, however, because he ended on a very personal, non-traditional note. He concluded by saying, I want to thank me. I want to thank me for never quitting. I want to thank me for trying to do more right than wrong. Graduates, never forget to give yourself credit. The most important relationship you will have is the one you have with yourself. Number two, be flexible. Moments in life that require flexibility often knock us over hard. Think of Toby, he's bending in the wind when all of a sudden a storm hits. Sure, he may knock into a few cars at the dealership, but ultimately, when the storm passes, he bounces back. You have the strength to bounce back. Believe it. Number three, don't let problems deflate you. I read the following on Insta recently. The scars of your past don't define you, but they've made you wise. Your past failures were not meant to break you down, but to break you open. You know the lyrics. Don't worry about a thing, because every little thing, it's going to be all right. Number four, know when you're stretched too thin. In other words, take care of yourself, mind, and body. There is more research on wellness than ever before. Get a mindfulness app. Set a reminder to move or breathe or whatever it is that keeps you balanced. And finally, number five, keep dancing. Dance, sing, smile, laugh. Don't take yourself too seriously. Start fresh and give those closest to you 
the chance to start fresh too. Class of 2020, it has been my honor to support you in reaching your goals. So from all of us at El Camino Real High School, congratulations, you made it. Most of you know me pretty well, but for those of you who don't, my name is Mason Sadler, and I'm proud to be representing the class of 2020. That being said, class, teachers, families, guests, welcome to our first ever drive-up graduation. Leave it to our class to mix things up a little. These are unprecedented times. People sick, unemployed, business closures, economic distress, stuck at home, everything is like we've never seen before. However, it's still a time of hope. This pandemic may have changed how our world lives for now, but our class knows struggles. And our class knows better than any other how to rise above. We know true pain and we know how to move forward. We know challenges are temporary and strength gets us through. Our time in high school has sometimes been trying, but we've also made some great memories. We've made plenty of new friends and even lost a few friends, some forever. We honor them by being here today as they couldn't. Everyone has lost someone. And today, those people look down and see just how far we've come. When I think back to when I first got to El Camino, I didn't see myself making it past 19 years old. Today I have plans to go to college and make a life for myself. I've learned that it's always important to continue moving forward. We've all faced many obstacles in school and life, but we are here today because we never gave up. I am thankful for the constant love and support. It's not weak to need help from others. El Camino was made to help us graduate and move forward with our lives. Those of us who truly took advantage of the help at El Camino are graduating and celebrating today. This school has teachers, a principal, and staff who genuinely care about their students. And in all honesty, it's refreshing. These staff have truly believed in us, even when we don't always make it easy to ourselves. They believe and care for us, even when we've made it difficult to. One thing I've learned over the last four years is that the choice is ours, about everything. Choices don't come without consequences, so choose carefully. This is the first day of the rest of our lives. Choose greatness, whatever that means to you. Be the best you, we all deserve it. Congratulations, class of 2020, we did it. Everyone, my name is Alyssa Boone, and I wanted to share some stories about the ocean, stories that I hope you connect with. I've always been drawn to anything related to the ocean because it's a constantly changing, refreshing view. I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak to you. After all, we have the unique experience of being part of the El Camino Real High School class of 2020. My first story is from Tuesdays of Morning, a novel I read when I first came to El Camino. The book was very interesting because it was about a student that was deeply impacted by one of his teachers. Whenever the two men would get together, the teacher, Mori, would share life lessons through stories. One story in particular was about a little wave. This little wave was bobbing along in the ocean until he noticed the waves in front of him crashing against the shore. This is terrible, the wave said. Look what's going to happen to me. Then along came another wave. It saw the little wave looking grim at the situation. And he asked the first wave, why do you look so sad? The first wave said, you don't understand. We're all going to crash. All of us waves are going to be nothing. Isn't it terrible? The second wave said, no, you don't understand. You're not just a wave, you're part of the ocean. Part of the ocean, he questioned. Yes, part of the ocean. We're all part of something bigger. The story about the little wave reminds me of all of us before we came to El Camino. We didn't know whether to stress, relax, or panic because we were somewhere different. I'm the daughter of two recovering addicts who gave custody of me to my grandparents. Even though my grandparents did the best job that they could, before I came to El Camino, I was constantly ditching classes. I didn't care if I had good grades. I didn't care if I graduated. When I first got to El Camino, I did not see a future for myself. And I certainly could not figure it out without help. Like many of you, I bobbed around from school to school, scared. I was convinced I was going to crash and be nothing, evaporate when I hit the shore. I think it's safe to say we were similar to the little wave. We needed guidance. 
The staff at El Camino gave us the direction we so desperately needed to persevere. The courage to overcome. If it weren't for the leadership and teachers here, we would have felt stuck. Bobbing around like the wave with no direction and no hope. One of the teachers that helped me not be like the little wave was Miss Bonner. Her way of teaching gave me the direction and desire to pursue a career that requires a college degree. Our women's studies class was the only reason I came to school sometimes. At the beginning, I was not sure I would connect with any of the volunteers that came each week. I thought they would be so different from the person that I was. When I found out I was going to be a mom, I realized we all had more in common than I thought. We clicked, we shared ideas and stories. I really bonded with these women. I came to Miss Bonner for advice, whether it was about schoolwork or a question about my son. She was always understanding, wise, and trustworthy. In fact, this is one of the unique parts of El Camino. If you took advantage to build relationships with the adults on campus, you know what I mean. Another person who brought me out of my shell was our principal, Ms. Zaiello. She is sincere, generous, and humble, and many other characteristics. But if I named them all, it would take all day. And these are just two of the faculty members that I have had the honor of learning from. For you, it may have been DiCarlo, Mrs. D, McLaughlin, Cervantes, or Peach. Or maybe it was Louie and Mario, Sarah and Amanda, Peterson, Voga, Sweet, Rokoski, Holly, or Miss G. What I know, what they have shown us all, is they are compassionate, sympathetic, and benevolent. I mentioned at the beginning how I love the ocean. I'm totally fascinated by starfish because they have the unique ability to regenerate. You may have heard this story at some point. One day an old man was walking along a beach that was littered with thousands of starfish that had been washed ashore by the high tide. As he walked, he came across a young boy tossing starfish back into the ocean. The man asked the boy what he was doing. Without looking up from his task, the boy simply replied, I'm saving these starfish. The man said, there are thousands of starfish and only one of you. What difference can you make? The boy picked up another starfish, gently tossed it in the water and said, I made a difference to that one. Despite the many obstacles we have faced during high school and the times we felt and maybe actually were totally on our own, I think we can all point to someone who, in some way, picked us up and made a difference. If you can't think of anyone, maybe you picked yourself up. Those who continuously encouraged me to keep moving forward, keep helping myself and keep helping others, even if just one person, it still gave me hope. Now that I'm graduating, I can see the brightest future ahead. I can see myself earning my bachelor's degree in science and then a medical degree moving towards working in a forensic pathology lab. That's gonna be another 13 years, yikes. In my own life, I have my own little starfish to whom I have to be a teacher. We all have that one person, whether it be a teacher, friend, or acquaintance, they always stand out to you. As the tides change and you go out into the real world, remember, like a starfish, you can regenerate. You can start over, grow in new ways, and dive in. Much like a starfish in the little wave, we are part of something bigger. Congratulations, class of 2020.